Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video, this is going to be episode one of our How to Katsu series, where we're going to talk about all things katsu, we're going to start really simple, really inter uh, introductory, and then in the future videos, we're going to get super granular with things like blues and combo lines and like when to attack with certain cards and all that stuff. So I really wanted to do this series, I did a How to Ninja series a little bit over a year ago. And since then, I've obviously gotten better at the game, but I also wanted to make it a series that was a little bit more tuned to a specific hero. And with Katsu being my main hero, I figured I could hopefully help newer players get into the game, but also help maybe um, existing players get interested in the hero. So we're going to be going over it. These, these videos are going to be kind of bite-sized. I am a content creator that's very discussion-based. I'm very, like, kind of relaxed. I don't do a lot of editing, a lot of crazy stuff. And you're not going to see like 50 minute videos out of me explaining things. Um, I just don't have that style of content. But if you want good short 15 to 20 minute videos, maybe 10 to 15 on these heroes uh, and on Katsu specifically and kind of go over every facet you possibly could think of. I have like, I'd say eight episodes already planned out for this series, including gameplays and things of that nature. So if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. If you're watching this way later down the road, thank you so much for watching it. If you're watching this like right when it comes out, give me suggestions on what other videos pertain to Katsu you would like to see, and maybe I can add them to the list of videos I'm going to be making. So we'll get into this. If you're a newer, if you're an existing player, um, definitely this might come as a little bit no surprise to you on some of this information, but for the newer players, that's what this mainly is for. So uh, you can feel free to skip if you see anything or hear anything that isn't, you know, or something that's kind of like no news to you. So for anyone that's not aware, Katsu is a ninja hero in the game of Flesh and Blood. Flesh and Blood has a class-based system where you basically pick a hero and then you build your deck to that hero's class. So for ninja heroes, you can, that means if you pick Katsu, you can have ninja cards in your deck as well as generic cards. Generic cards can go into any hero deck. However, I can't play warrior cards in Katsu. You have to play ninja cards. So he's a ninja-based hero. He came out in the first ever set of Flesh and Blood over two years ago, three years ago, uh, and called Welcome to Wraith. And he reads, he, every hero has an ability, and his ability, or abilities, multiple abilities, his ability is the first time an attack action card you control hits each turn, you may discard a card with cost zero. If you do, search your deck for a card with combo, banish it face up, shuffle your deck, and then you may play it this turn. So basically, this this deck, for anyone that's coming from Magic, it's hard to really give you a deck that it's like. I guess the closest deck would be Affinity. Some people may come at me in the comments for that, but that's the best one I could think of. Something that's like a tribal synergistic deck where like your your cards ping off of each other. It's not quite a combo deck in terms of how Magic, like old school combo Magic decks are, where it was like play a bunch of one thing and then like one shot kill people. This is more of like your cards get incremental value as you play more synergistic cards with it. So. He has access to, he's an aggro based hero for the most part. You can play him control, and there was a time frame where he was more of a control based hero, but generally he's like an aggro combo uh, based hero. So he starts at 40 life, which is the base level life for each uh, hero in the game, with the exception of a couple others. And he has powerful, uh, powerful abilities as far as being able to attack with cards that have what's called go again. So in this game, in Flesh and Blood, you have. Uh, you have action points, and each player starts with one action point for their turn. So it means you can do one thing. Now, if you have a way of giving that action point go again, um, whether it's attacking or it's an ability card or like an instant, whatever it may be, a non instant, but like a, a, a non attack card, um, if you can give it go again, then you retain your action point and you're able to continue your turn. Or if you can gain an action point just in general, and certain cards allow that, then that helps as well. So he has powerful. Cards that uh, attack for four, five, three. He's aggro based here. Like I said, like here, Surging Strike, which is one of his premier attacks. It costs two to play, as you can see in the top right corner, and it attacks for five. And it combos into cards like Whelming Gust Wave. So, Whelming Gust Wave is the combo card for Surging Strike. 
Katsu has many combo lines. I think there's over 10 plus combo lines, and we'll be going over each one of them in a video uh, here in the in the coming weeks. So. Basically, the, what you're trying to do with Katsu is you're trying to start off with cards like Surging Strike. There's a card called Head Jab, Leg Tap. You're trying to, or any any attack action card that has Go Again. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get something to hit so then you can go get its combo card. And its combo card, if it's comboed with a previous attack on that attack chain, then it gets a buff. So basically, if you play Surging Strike, I'm oh, sorry, wrong way. If you play Surging Strike for five and it hits, you can discard a card with cost zero. So in the top right corner where it says zero, and then you can go get its combo card that has the word combo in it, like Whelming Gust Wave. So normally, Whelming Gust Wave only attacks for three. If But if it's comboed, it gets plus one attack to it. So it attacks for four and it gets go again and it gets, if it hits, draw a card. So Normally, this card would be a zero for zero cost three attack with no go again, which in this game is not good. But if it is combo with surging strike, it's a four attack go again card, and it says on hit draw card. So it gets a buff. Now, Katsu has a lot of these different ones. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to tell your opponent, hey, here's a good size attack. If you do not block this attack, I'm going to go get another attack that's more powerful, right? But the catch 22 with Katsu is you could already have Whelming Gust Wave in your hand. So if your opponent decides, okay, I'm a block surging strike, right, to prevent you from going to get Whelming Gust Wave, and they and they block with two out of four of their cards that they have available in their hand, and then you play Whelming Gust Wave, well, now they just used half their hand to try to stop you from having it, but you already have it, right? Um, so that's, that's kind of like at the most base level, that is the power of Katsu and what he does. He's an aggro-based hero, but he uses little combo combo tricks and little like play lines to be able to maximize his ability to get an attack to hit and then be able to gain value. He also uses cards uh, like Ancestral Empowerment and Flick Flack, which are powerful reaction cards in the game. You have Ancestral Empowerment, which says target ninja attack action card gains plus one, and, it, and you get to draw a card. So basically... For example, if you go get Whelming Gust Wave after playing Surging Strike for four, go again on hit draw a card, and they block for four, you play Ancestral Empowerment, it gains plus one damage. If they have no way of defending it past that reaction, then Whelming Gust Wave will hit, and you'll draw two cards, one from Whelming Gust Wave and one from Ancestral Empowerment. Very, very powerful ability. You also have good defensive reactions in this game uh, for the game value called Flick Flack, which says if the next card you defend with has it, a card is a card with the word combo. It gets plus two defense. So the average good card, the average good block in this game is three. Most defense reactions block for four at a base level, which this one does. However, this one gives a plus two buff to your next block if it's a combo card. So if you block with, for, with Flick Flack for four, and then your next block is a Whelming Gust Wave, instead of blocking for three, it'll block for five. So you get really, really... Uh, uh, high value for your blocks and that's why an old control version of this deck used to be really really popular back when the game was a little bit slower um, but for the most part why do you play Katsu right and that's what we're going to get into here in a second and that, that was for more of the newer players this hopefully can be useful for both newer players to the game in general but also uh, but also like seasoned players who maybe are just starting to get into Katsu so here's my five base reasons why you play katsu this might be different for everyone but this is the five things that i have whittled down to uh both from a play perspective and just from like a fan perspective i guess is the best way to put it so number one it's a flexible combo deck one of the premier reasons to play katsu is it's a very flexible deck you can play it very aggro based you can play it mid-range right and we're using these terms very lightly uh you can play a control Right, and it and you can take the same deck and play it very, very, very differently depending on the hero you're playing against. Um, and what I like about Katsu also is you can change up your play lines, right? Like, there are certain heroes in the game, which isn't a bad thing, that have very s more simple play lines, um, and they're like heavy, heavy, uh, um, aggro based or heavy control based and yes they might have different ways to play the same hand but Katsu specifically depending on the hero you're playing you could have four or five different ways to play a hand effectively and it's a really flexible combo deck that allows you to change up things very consistently and throw your opponent off guard basically what I always tell people is with Katsu you're trying to Jedi mind trick your opponent into interacting with you you're telling your opponent you know maybe turn one you uh, you 
uh, attack with surging strike for five, and they block it, and then you attack with whelming gust wave from your hand because it has, you know, it's already there, so it's four go again. Then two turns later, you attack with surging strike again. Well, now your opponent's like, okay, well, if I block this again, they might have whelming gust wave, and then I'm screwed. You know, and then they don't block it. Then it turns out you never had Wilming Gust Wave, right? Like, that's a very, very, very simple example. But there's ways of you can basically trick your opponent into interacting with you or trick them into not interacting with you when you need to go get your combo piece. So I really like that. The second one is Katsu is the king of interaction. Kind of what I just talked about. Uh, if you like interactive gameplay in card games, if like in which most card players do, Katsu is very, very big on that. He is a very very aggro deck at his height i think for the most part but he's not a play solitary he's not like a, a red burn deck right where you just don't care and you're just throwing cards down you're trying to get your opponent to zero as fast as possible that's what a lot of people do when they first play katsu and if you're a newer player out there or newer to the hero i encourage you not to do that uh katsu is the king of interaction he wants to use the give and take essence of flesh and blood and what makes flesh and blood so fun and so good from a mechanics perspective he does that very very well so that's the second reason the third reason ninja aesthetic i love like ninja based stuff i love samurai based stuff like you know far east type type vibe so uh as you can see in the background of this like this the background you're looking at right now is mysterio which is one of the areas of the world of Wraith. I definitely encourage you to go to fabtcg.com and look at the lore of this game. Uh, it's based in like the winds of Mysteria, like these high r mountains where they learn these ancient principles of art of war and things of that nature. So if you're into that kind of stuff, like just from an aesthetic fan perspective, really, really cool. I highly recommend it. Um, the fourth thing is it's a fundamental class of flesh and blood. Flesh and blood right now has a lot of different classes. We have guardian, warrior, illusionist, ninja, um, mechanologist ranger all these really uh assassin we have all these classes that are coming in but in my opinion ninja is one of the premier classes and fundamental classes of flesh and blood james white specifically said in one of his interviews that the first ever so in the first ever set of flesh and blood was called walk from the wraith it had four heroes it had a guardian hero named bravo a ninja hero named Katsu, a warrior hero named Dorinthia, and a brute hero named Reinar. So four different classes, four different heroes. The original set was supposed to have three ninjas in it, right? So that was what the original idea of the game was going to be, was three ninjas. All the, all, every, every hero was going to be a ninja hero in the first set, according to James White. So because of that, I'm pretty sure that the, I can't confirm it, obviously, but I'm almost positive that it, it's a fundamental class of flesh and blood. It's something that the... Uh, de developers really like and have an affinity with. So playing Katsu, like I think you're always going to get some level of support for him or something he can use, and he's just going to consistently be a good hero to play into. And when it comes to spending your money, which is number five right here, right, and buying into a class, I think Ninja is one of the classes where you can safely buy into and always know there's going to be support for it. There's going to be you know things going on with it, and you not feel like your money is wasted. Flesh and Blood is a slightly more expensive game to get into from a competitive standpoint, not from an entry level, like low level, just trying it out, but from a competitive standpoint, it is pretty expensive. But Ninja is one of the cheapest, Ninja and Katsu specifically, is one of the cheapest decks to buy into. Um, I'd say it's definitely in like the bottom three of cost. And right now in this meta, as you're watching this, Katsu is starting to become a little bit more relevant. Uh, he was kind of out of it for a little bit, but he's definitely gotten more into it. And he's a high skill gap hero. He's a hero that the more you, I know it sounds like intuitive for every hero, but for Katsu specifically, the more you play the hero, the better you feel with it. Katsu is definitely a hero that there's certain heroes in the game of flesh and blood, like five, for example, or um, I'm trying to think of other ones that are really, really like, you can play them to a certain level even right off the bat. Katsu's not that way. Katsu's a hero you gotta gotta work on, you gotta play right. But once you do play him right, like the skill gap of of a uh, seasoned player versus a new player is pretty fun. So these are the reasons I think you should get into Katsu. Uh, there's more than this. I just wanted to make it again. I'm trying to make this content bite sized. So definitely let me know if uh, you like this type of content. I'm gonna be doing other stuff. Um, the stuff I have on the docket right now when it comes to um, when it comes to this series is I'm going to be doing like Katsu archetypes. So different decks of Katsu. There's a control variant. There's a mid range, like value based one. There's a tiger, 
a Kitty Katsu list, which is like a specific combo line that he uses. There's a Bonds of Ancestry list, which is kind of the current list, the most powerful one being used right now. But there's different archetypes for him. So I'm going over for that. I'm going to go on over his combo lines. Where does combo lines mean? What are the best ones to run? Why would you run certain lines? I'm going to go over his mana base system, his blues. So in Flesh and Blood, blues use, blue cards are usually used for mana. Um, or energy or wherever game you come from. And here it's just resources. So I'll be going over that. I'll be going over his reaction cards, uh, when and where to attack with certain cards. And then I'll be doing matchup guides. Uh, how does he play into Guardian? How should you play him against Ranger? How should you play him against Illusionist? Obviously, those will change over time. So if you're watching this later, hopefully that will help you even. I'll try to keep it to where it's useful even a year or two down the road. Um, but yeah. Let me know if you like this type of content. If you do, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Feel free to check out the Patreon and the Discord down below. If you're a long-standing member and you're just now watching this series, hopefully this invigorates you to play Katsu even more. And, yeah, I'll see you all in the next videos and see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all so much.